Hello. Today we're going to be discussing uh, the element of design line in detail um, and how it's really used in three dimensional art. So, you know, normally you think about line as really sort of uh, lines on a, on a paper, uh, more relating to the sort of the two dimensional world, but yet line sort of exists in our three dimensional world. So if we take a look outside, you'll see a lot of different examples of the use of line and telephone poles are really great ones for that. Because if we look at this, we see this big thick line here, we see this slightly smaller line and then just a series of lines. And again, that becomes the use of line in a three dimensional form. But it just doesn't not only there, but you can see it everywhere outside. So if we take a look at this, Here's this sort of continual line that goes from thick to thin and this these sort of curvy lines, right? And this really nice tree. Even blades of grass truly are the use of line, okay? So just a series of different lines again and again. So let's kind of talk about what line is. Line is areas whose length is considerably greater than its width. Um, in three-dimensional art, whole works may consist of line. Lines may also appear within forms or even implied in space. Lines can steer our attention in a particular direction or perhaps help convey the emotional effect the artist is intending. So let's take a look at this garden shear. Do you guys notice it's just one continual line, sort of? Okay. A really good example of a piece that's really sort of based off of line and then we can think about art i mean this is a piece that you would you know use in your garden or a functional piece but it's actually quite elegant if we take a look at this and how we're using line these curvy lines right sort of the way a vine sort of grows um and it's just sort of this continual line Um, if we take a look at this, sort of made up of a series of lines, we add a little bit of color. Uh, and remember, sometimes our elements of design, they don't need to be just one thing. It could be a, a couple of different elements of design. So in this case, we're sort of talking about line, these sort of linear lines, as well as color, okay? Here's another example of a piece uh, using it. Uh, Alexander Calder, have you noticed I've used him quite a bit. Um, he's, he made these really interesting large sculptures, but he also did these uh, smaller pieces. You know, I think he called them the circus, which he took one little one line and sort of uh, that sort of used it and bend it and twisted it to make sort of figures. So if we take a look at this, this is just a line where there's sort of a strong man holding up all these little figures. Again, just a great use of line. All right, there's just a close-up of it. Um, you will do a similar assignment to this, just so you know. Um, here's another one. So it shows you how, how far back Calder goes. So this is 1926. Um, again, just kind of this fun face. Um, Wire is used almost as a two-dimensional drawing to create an image. Wire is a good linear material, okay? And that's, again, that's the material we're gonna be using for this next, this next project. So look at how fun that, that piece is. Take a look at this. We may not wanna think about dancers as being the use of line, but look at their body and how this is just one sort of line, right? You see how it just sort of follows that, okay? Um, I think this is a Seattle theater company that does this sort of stuff where they take human bodies and they stack them and they create almost these all, all different shapes. Oh, there it is. Uh, it's an international Renault dance company who um, traces back in 1971 to Dartmouth College. Um, and it's just, again, look at this, you know, these bodies as sort of these lines stacked up. 
Um, the linear nature of the human figure seen from a distance is often called into play by choreographers who turn dances into moving linear sculptures. So these are kind of fun, right? You know, so there's like two or three people there. Um, interesting, you know, presentation. So here's one person. Again, we can see that use of line. Um, if you've ever been to St. Louis and seen uh, what's it's really it's called the arch, the St. Louis arch, but its actual real name is the Jefferson National Expansion Memorial. OK, and if we look at it, it's just this one continual line. We go from thick to thin. Um, and here's another view of it. This artwork is a good example of line and negative space used in sculpture. What do we mean by negative space? This empty space that sort of uh, sort of frames the sky almost. If you ever get a chance to go to St. Louis, it's really it's really a fun place to go check out. You get inside here. There's like this little pod. It's a lot bigger than it looks. Um, it gives you an idea of it. But you get inside. You, if you, you get inside and you get in this little pod, and it takes you all the way up. And then up here, there's some windows that you can see uh, out at, um, just neat. Now, if you're scared of heights, probably not gonna do too well, okay? Um, here's another example of a good use of line, Robert Smithson's Spiral Jetty. This is a pretty famous piece. We just see that sort of continual line. This is kind of an earthwork piece that is time-based. Um, and what do we mean by that? Well, it's made out of these you know, black rock and salt and earth. And, you know, the natural erosion of the water is going to make this disappear over time. And so uh, that's why, and it's really made of earth materials as well. Uh, this artwork must be viewed from a distance in order to understand how it relates to line. The spiral jelly also relates to time. This artwork will only exist for a short time before it dissolves. Okay, just sort of what I said earlier. Get to see how how big it is. This is a little guy here. Here's a uh, here's a uh, guy on a canoe. All right. So now we're going to begin to talk about lines within form. Uh, the use of line can be found within form. So what do we mean by that? We sort of talked about this a little bit earlier. Um, and I showed you this piece in the last PowerPoint, or, or similar, uh, same artist, I should say. So lines within forms. Look at all the different lines that we see within this piece. So we have these lines, we have these lines, we have this line, we even have this sort of line, we got this line. And so it's lines within this sort of base shape, okay? Um, here's another good example of it. It's a little bit different and you almost have to see it, but the natural marble of the material sort of creates these lines, again, these lines within forms. So if we look at this, we notice that it has a series of lines as well, right? If we look at uh, this piece, we can really notice the lines. Do you see them? That they're here, they're here, they're here, they're going this way. Again, great example of lines within forms. Um, implied and directional lines. Certain lines are not physically present in a work, but can nevertheless subtly be perceived. So what do we mean by that? Um, we kind of showed you this earlier, right, in the last PowerPoint, but this is a great example of an implied line uh, that doesn't exist. What do we what do we we say? His eye is looking at his foot, and there's this sort of implied line that is happening. The person is, you know, the sculpture is pulling a, a thorn out of its foot. And so it has to really take a look at that. So you can use those sort of implied lines within your work. Here's another line that isn't as obvious, and we've got a lot of them. Um, we have our implied line happening here, okay? Again, we don't physically see that as a line. And then we've got a really interesting line. Do you see it? Um, look at this, this is really cool. I love this. We can go this way, this, we can go this way, we can go this way. Look at this arm goes woo 
all the way around, right? And you could just follow all that. Yeah, really kind of a uh, using a line a couple of different ways. Oh, here's a really great piece. I haven't seen this piece. Like the last one, I think I photographed that at the Met. Um, this one I haven't seen. It's called Walking to the Sun. And we have, you know, we have a real linear line that you see, um, a directional line. So if we look at this, boom, here it is. And look at all these figures climbing up it, going as quickly and fastly using this sort of implied line as well. Because when we look at it from a different angle, it, these people are walking really fast, right? But it ends right here. But it actually, if you feel, look at the piece, it almost senses like it's a, an implied line that will continue uh, moving out into the sky. Okay, so again, that's a great example of an implied line um, when we have this big physical line that's already here. How's that? You see, you kind of see what I'm getting at there? That just doesn't seem like it ends. These people are really moving along. Um, I think this is in Austin, Texas. Could be completely wrong, um, but for some reason I think it is. But I do want to definitely see this. Okay, let's talk about the qualities of line. Our lines tend to move very quickly over simple, smooth lines. Okay, uh, Sculptures that are more complex, our eyes read them more slowly. Lines in sculpture, we tend to think about them being slow and fast. Now, that seems kind of weird, right? Slow and fast lines. Um, so let's kind of get into what that talks about. Um, don't want to talk about my age a little bit, but um, Transformers, I guess this is already uh, dated. This is the sort of main character. And uh, let me kind of get in. And this is sort of the more contemporary version. Now, there's a lot of details on this. OK, so again, when we have objects that have a lot of details, that we tend our eyes read them more slowly. Now, that's the good guy. Now, this is the bad guy. Now, this is what I sort of grew up watching a cartoon like this. Much more simple, simple details. It's easier to read the face and the body parts. Um, so let's take a look at this. This is the movie. Look at all the details. It's hard to read these figures' faces, right? So if we look at this, what does the face look like? If your eyes immediately look at it, it's really hard to tell because of the level of details that are in there. So our eyes, again, read those lines much more slowly. We take a look at these two comparisons of the villain. I think his name is Megatron. We're going to read this really slow, a lot of details. And this we're going to read really fast, right? Not as many details. We can clearly see the face, the body. Boom, we move over it really quickly. Um, look at how fast our eyes were able to pick up this piece of artwork compared to the last image I showed you. Um, just a quick little simp line. The moment I turn that uh, this image on, you could instantly read it. Again, it's simple, so our eyes read it more quickly. Eyes read it more slowly, right? Got to look over to notice that it's a teapot, right, with a lid. And there's a good comparison, okay? So just quickly open your eyes, close your eyes, and then open them, and you'll see what we're kind of getting after with uh, quick and slow lines. Um, again, I showed you this earlier, quick and slow lines. Here, we just read it really quickly, easy to see. This, we got to kind of look over a little bit more uh, in depth. It's got a lot more details. All right, more details, less details. Our eyes can read it quick and uh, slow. Okay, so let's talk about the different types of lines, okay? Uh, we don't really think about, but we talk about horizontal lines, okay? What does horizontal lines do for us? Well, they give us a sense of restfulness, uh, uh, secure feelings, okay? Um, if we've ever had an opportunity to take a look at the ocean or water, we'll notice that it's there's a series of lines, okay? Made up of a lot of lines, even in the sky's got some lines. When we look out at it, it gives us these restful, secure, peaceful, calm feelings. 
how about these? These guys are almost like, I mean, they're almost like Barry, right? I mean, they're just laying in there, but they just relaxing, secure. I think of even a person laying on the ground with a blanket because they're almost a horizontal line. And again, there's that restful, secure feelings. All right, let's talk about vertical lines. Vertical lines. It's this, they suggest defiance or escape. Um, look at this, defiance. It's, it's breaking through and heading to the, the, the sky, right? Again, defiance and escape. Or maybe you read it as escape, okay? Look at that, look at that, the feeling. Now we've got these, we've got these lines, right? So we got some horizontal lines, but we got these long vertical lines, like it's almost defining gravity, making its way up to the sun. All right, look at these, these sort of lines as it goes up, okay? Again, defining, defining um, uh, uh, space and time. All right, another, look at these, these sort of lines as it's sort of pushing its way up again, okay? All right, let's talk about diagonal lines. What does diagonal lines do? The feeling of drama or energy. The feeling of drama or energy. So let's take a look at this. Now, this is a sculpture that's it's never going to change, but these diagonal lines give you a sense of movement, drama, excitement. It's these lines that really sort of set this piece up, right? Um, even this is sort of a diagonal line. This is a diagonal line. Here's a diagonal line, but there is a real good sense of movement that you feel from this particular piece. Um, here's another one. Again, this uh, bronze sculpture isn't going anywhere, but those diagonal lines give a really great sense of movement, okay? Kind of abstract, right? You get a sense that it's human legs or body parts, but it's not really, right? Again, my one of my favorites right here. Look at the power of that diagonal line. Again, giving that sense of movement, drama, excitement. Okay, so let's go ahead and start to talk about the next assignment. Uh, wire is really a great material to use with incorporation of line. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and later on and show you a video how to work with wire and we're gonna be creating some interesting things, but let's just show you some interesting wire projects, okay? So if we take a look at this, these are both done with wire. One is sort of a two-dimensional drawing, one is a three-dimensional figure. Um, both are really highly successful. Uh, I really kind of like the, these two pieces a lot. Um, here's another good example of using line. You've got this, uh, you bend it and you twist it, and it, you know, it sort of creates this hawk shape. Some people, okay, uh, love this one. Okay, this owl, again, this is sort of a flat one. Uh, a figure, I think this is really interesting. Nice little narrative with uh, this wire assignment. Again, sort of really using these linear lines. This guy's drinking some coffee, reading a magazine in his book. I like how we're incorporating the chair as well, and how it's life size. Um, little dog, okay. There's a lot of wire for this particular piece. How about that? I mean, that's a certain level of um, wire ability. There. Now, a lot of these images I've taken off of the internet just to show examples. But once we're done here, I'm going to go ahead and show you examples of student artwork, and it, I would say they're most impressive. Um, look at that, okay? Uh, wire, I've seen this artist use wood, other materials, but again, wire is a really great example of material used for line. How about that one, huh? Uh, just all these series of lines, bending and twisting uh, the wire to create this sort of human figure. A fox. Goat. Kind of getting the idea, right? Some birds. Uh, rooster, I guess. Um, cyclist. Some guy drinking or some, I think it's a lady actually. She's got a piece of jewelry there. Um, 
uh, copy of a uh, of an actor. I forget his name. Uh... Okay, so let's show you examples of uh, what students have done in in this particular 3D class uh, with wire. Um, this before we get started, I want to show you what I do not want you to do. I don't want you to simply to create a figure just by taking the wire and just bound it again and again over. It's kind of a thoughtless way of working. So we really want to create the form in a very different way. So whatever you do, do not do this. Okay. How, how cool is this piece, right? I think she did a fantastic job of this. I wish I knew the artist that did it. I could give her uh, credit on it, but she, this is really neat. She's using a little other materials, but we see we're using wire this way and then using copper wire. And I love the narrative here. Remember we talked earlier about engaging curiosity and uh, creating those visual puzzles we don't immediately understand. That's what we really get with this piece. So this is working on a lot of levels. We're not only using the wire in a really fantastic way, but we're also creating a narrative or a, a story that is going to bring the viewer back again and again. And here's sort of a close up of that. And again, this is all hand done um, by a student in this class who has never worked with wire before. Um, here's just a big uh, lion, or I don't know, uh, not an animal expert, jaguar maybe. Uh, kind of neat incorporating sort of this wood. People are really pushing the bubble on these, right? Um, got that that really interesting uh, 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 narrative there. Um, this was a fun one. I think his name is Jason, um, is the name of the artist. And this is like a little baby. Now, the slides really does not do this, kind of a life-size baby. The slides definitely do not do this piece justice. Um, so it was hard to really take. But when you see this in person, it's just a really fantastic piece. Um, this is kind of neat, a little owl on a log, um, just a 2D, um, sort of this 2D. So you're going to have a choice. You can work two-dimensionally, sort of like this, or three-dimensionally like this. Okay, so you remember the difference? 2D is more of a flat. 3D is, uh, is kind of, you can walk around and it creates a lot of depth, okay? Um, I'm probably open to either or. This is probably, 3D is more of the preference, though. Um, this is cool. I think her name is uh, Carolyn Huff, if I remember correctly, and it's just a top hat. And she used sort of uh, black wire for it, and I love it. It's almost like a squiggly drawing, right? She's using that the line, beautiful line quality there. I mean, just just amazing work. And you could put it on your head. Uh, so it was actually, like I said, it was about the size of a big, nice, big top hat. Um, you know, I don't take really good pictures, uh, so this is just another really bad picture of me. Uh, however, I did want to put in the figure um, so you can get a, well, get in there so you can really get a sense of scale that the artist was working with. Um, I forget this gentleman's name, but I thought this was kind of fun. You know, he incorporated a couple things, made it life-size. You know, you got the guitar, the hat, the glasses, um, just kind of a really neat piece. Uh, I believe her name, and you know, some of these artists were going back a while ago. I think it's Sarah, if I remember correctly. I love this piece. Um, she originally tried to start with actual chicken wire, and it just didn't work out. Uh, you know, it was really hard to work with. So she ended up buying uh, regular, you know, wire that you get at the art supply store. So what's interesting about this piece is, um, if you notice, it's actually made up of chicken wire shapes. So it's all these sort of uh, you know, hagnal uh, shape. And then just as really, again, this is life size. Um, just a great, great piece. And there's sort of a close up. So really these, these pieces with good attention to detail really work out really, really well. Just a fun one a little uh, pig or mole or something, I'm not sure. Uh, and then just kind of set on a piece of wood to sort of stand up and give it a little bit more three-dimensional depth. Bunny rabbit, forget his name. Um, kind of neat, right? I mean, this was quite large. Uh, I would say this is probably about two feet 
He's got a little lollipop. He's got a little X. Again, a uh, little engaging curiosity. Is that a Band-Aid? Those are the kind of questions that you're asking yourself. So just really using it uh, quite well. Um, uh, this is kind of a neat piece. He's using sort of these, uh, oh, sorry. He's using, you know, colored wire. He's using colored wire uh, to create the form. A little more difficult to work with. I maybe don't recommend it unless you've worked with wire before. Uh, but it worked out really, really well for him. Here's a really interesting one, quite large uh, human figure. Okay, really kind of blew it out, made a very interesting shape here. Uh, she did a love it. You see the implied line here too between the cat and the mouse. A little bit of female clay, uh, and then she used some yellow, uh, some orange wire, and created this really interesting little narrative, little fun play between these two characters. Oh, this was fantastic. Very simple. Uh, I'm not sure of his name. Um, love it. I mean, I just think, you know, it goes to sort of flat and then it becomes three dimensional. Very artistic. Very interesting. Um, uh, she did a neat job of a real three dimensional bird. Oh, this was spectacular. Absolutely massive. Probably three or four three to four feet in size. Um, images do not do this justice. Uh, Rhonda had just an incredible working with all these different wires, okay? Even creating almost like stained glass with um, colored uh, plastic, I mean, like a uh, cling wrap. And then, you know, just like I said, just really, really a great piece. Um, and that's it. So I, again, my name is Lou Perosi. I hope you enjoyed this PowerPoint presentation online, which is Element of Design. Thank you.